Good morning, West Acton Baptist Church and other friends who might be watching this video. Today I'm beginning a new feature called Wednesday Word, and I'm going to do this every Wednesday. It's going to be a 10-minute-ish video. Could be about worship, could be about scripture, could be about something going on in the news, but a way to connect during the middle of the week, something for us to think about, and maybe something for us to chat about at church on Sunday. Today, I am sharing a portion of an article that comes from this wonderful magazine called The Christian Citizen, which is published by one of our partner organizations, the American Baptist Home Mission Society. I have a copy of this in the office. If you'd like it, you're welcome to borrow it. This article is written by Reverend Dr. Sarah B. Drummond, who is the founding dean of Andover Newton Seminary at Yale Divinity School. And it really spoke to me about some things that I also have been thinking about and wrestling with regarding church and what it looks like going forward. The article is called Yes to New, No to Normal. And it starts like this. Dear, Dear Normal, I have been pining for you, Normal, for two and a half long years. Many times I convinced myself that I'd found a new version of you, only to find that it too was temporary, illusory, and now you're back, and although I'm happy to see you, let's just say I'm having trust issues. You need not unpack those bags. Let me back up. The community I serve as a leader, Andover Newton Seminary at Yale Divinity School, is up and running post-COVID. We need to wear masks in class and in worship. We have to observe certain restrictions about where we can eat. But otherwise, we're able to interact as a community in ways that feel both familiar from pre-COVID days and brand spanking new. I find myself remembering things I didn't know I'd forgotten about. Orders of worship, habits of preparation, and the location of objects I haven't needed in a long time. Where are the flip charts? In the conference room closet, buried under clerical robes and chafing dishes we haven't touched in almost the equivalent of a Master of Divinity student's entire career with us. Where does music show up in a non-Zoom worship service? Answer, ideally, everywhere. And yet, normal, I'm realizing I don't want you, my old, familiar version of you, back for two reasons. First, in your presence, there was so much I didn't appreciate. I'd see a table of students in our common room and just walk by. Now I marvel. I tear up. I even occasionally ask if they mind if I nerd things up by sitting down for a few minutes of informal conversation. And laughter. I never knew how much I love to, need to sing with other people in order to feel close to them. I took for granted how much easier it is to do my job when I can pop into a colleague's office, grab a student leader in the hall, or see a set of eyes and know that something's off and in need of attention. Second, when we thought you were sticking around forever, we didn't realize the ways in which you privileged some and disadvantaged others. Normal happens to serve me well as an able-bodied, white, straight, educated, and financially secure American. When you were gone, I got a tiny taste of what it's like when you go away, causing me to suffer the most modest losses of mobility, resources, and freedom. I'd allowed myself to enjoy the advantages you'd bestowed on me. Your absence woke me up to dimensions of my own life in this society, and more importantly, to the lives of others. I won't be falling asleep in the same way again. So normal, I'm sending you packing. Why? Because we don't need you. And because I don't trust you'd stick around anyway. As for me, I want to find and create a new way, shaped by gratitude and intentionality. It goes on from there, and if you want to read the whole article, you can probably also find it online. It really made me think a lot about what we're doing in church and what we want to keep and what we want to add. We need to keep Zoom. Zoom has allowed us to connect with people that we haven't been able to connect with before. So that's not going anywhere. But also we need to look at ways that we can start gathering together again in person. She speaks of gratitude in the article, and I was thinking as I got into my car to come here this morning how grateful I was that this day has two options for me to interact with people in the town. 
At noontime, I'm gathering with clergy, interfaith clergy from Acton, and we are restarting a group that had been dormant during the pandemic of clergy, local clergy, who are going to gather today for a brown bag luncheon. And I'm so excited about that. I love to collaborate with other church leaders and faith leaders. And that has been a huge part of my work up to this point, And I want to continue that. So really excited about that. And then at four o'clock, Ruth and I are going to head over to South Acton Congregational Church, where we will be um, joining them in their 4 p.m. Lenten vigils against gun violence. And uh, that is going to be us standing at the street corner on School Street and holding up signs and waving and smiling and um, getting people to think about ways that they could potentially join us to work together in the community to be more active on issues around gun violence and gun legislation. So excited about those two opportunities, excited to gather in person. And I just want us to remember as we think and pray this morning that um, there are ways for us to come together and that we need to start thinking about ways that we can start gathering again in person. And getting out and doing things in the community is one of those really awesome ways that we can do that. So I'm going to send you along. Look at this. I managed to do it in less than 10 minutes. So exciting. I'm going to send you along with a prayer this morning and, um, and hope that you have a blessed day. Look around. Look at what you have to be grateful for. And if you find that your day is not bringing you joy, we talked about this in the book study last night, then I, I challenge you to think about some things that you can add into your day that would make it more joyful. Even just tiny little bits of joy. Uh, putting a song on that you love and dancing around your kitchen. Going outside for a walk and looking at the sky. Picking up the phone and talking to a friend. Or better yet, going to meet a friend and have coffee or lunch. Or a walk. Taking your pet out to the dog park. Um... There are so many different things that we can do to inject these little energy-giving joy moments into our day. So I urge you to think about that. And let's pray. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for community. Thank you for the ways that you offer for us to gather together. And we know that you tell us that when two or three are gathered in your name, that you are with us. So God, I ask that you would help to lead and guide and direct us as we think and plan about ways for our community to gather again in person, both here within the church walls and outside in the larger community. We are not sure of the way, but we know that you know the way. And so we pray that you would guide us and direct us going forward. I pray for each and every person in the sound of my voice that you would bless them and keep them, that you would help them to find ways to inject little pieces of joy in their day today. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for you, for your life, for your work, for your teaching, for your love. And we ask that you would just continue to guide us and direct us as a community moving forward. And it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Thanks, everyone, and have a really awesome Wednesday.